boys and girls. No, it's not Christmas, but Alex is here. You probably all know, or if you don't, I'm telling you, I'm a great fan of these Festool MFT style bench tops. I have them scattered all over the place in my workshop and I'm continually adding jigs or bases they're set out so they can be attached to these rather than using clamps and things like that. Now it's well and good when you use your traditional dogs like that which is not a problem because they sit flush but Technology is getting the better of us and uh, they're coming up with these fandangled little uh, stops which have got these collars on them and uh, at the end of the day they're good I mean the, the whole idea of the collar is see if you put that down you've got, you've got it there but it's not flush against the hole, the hole itself. Why you want that, that's another story, but it's not flush. With these ones, they've got a little collar around them that'll stop them going down the hole. But if you put them in the hole, that collar sits proud of the hole. Let's see, what are you, what are you seeing? Yeah, you can see that good stuff. Sits proud of the hole by about, or oh, close to a mil. So when you try and butt something up against it, you can see there, that's hitting the collar when it should be going that extra one mil further in. They've got others, like these are now my favourites, these are those TSO lock dogs. Their main purpose, their primary purpose is to lock two pieces together let's see like so and I use this is a spare totally redundant drill now uh, on its lowest torque setting starts to ratchet and it's now locked if I do it a little bit tighter um, yeah it's it's tight. The reason why it hasn't locked super tight is because I didn't go all the way down because this hasn't got that chamfer on it. So, and then not only that, there's also these other anchors. The whole idea of all this is that you can make up your own jigs and hold downs. This particular one, again, is the same. It sits in there but you have to then secure it with this uh, knob underneath not a drama you know I mean it's a hassle if but if you can't get to it it's no good that's why these are so good because you put it in tighten the knob it's got these rubber washers in there these things compress expand the rubber and jams inside the hole like look at that, you know, that's not going to move. The problem is you've got to allow for this collar. Now one of the things that you can use is a countersink bit. Now, I'm not, I've already rigged this up so I'm not going to take it out. By using the countersink bit in the drill, um, you're not necessarily going to get it perpendicular. And if you put it in lopsided look it'll seat down because of the depth of it but it's not ideal you know hey we all strive for perfection um, and not many have reached it like I have <laughs> just kidding now this is actually a Beal um, uh, countersink bit and that's a Woodpecker unit, and yeah, in all fairness, woodpecker stuff 
is not cheap. These you can pick up for a few bucks at Bunnings or any home hardware store and they look good, they look similar. Um, unfortunately they're cheap as shit so at the moment it's sitting in the pile that the next visitor to the workshop that wants a freebie is more than happy to have it because I'll never use it again. Um, but you know, again at the end of the day it's better than not having one. But that will permit you to at least drill a 90 degree hole. So let's give it a try. Put it over there. I've actually used an existing hole on the bench to adjust the depth. I've put this outrigger on there only because the diameter of the countersink is bigger than the diameter of that hole and I'd rather not countersink the aluminium. So put it on there, attach your, not that drill, here we go, my little favourite and That's it. You've now countersunk it. Oh, come on. Countersunk it and you will find everything being equal that now is... Oh, where, where, where is that? Here we go. That little cutesy flush. Um, if I use the other one, remember how we had that little Oopsie, straight up to it, not a problem. So, that's good. Um, and if you've happened to have this type of setup, brilliant. Um, I'm forever after new things. Now, UKJ Path, oh sorry, all these holes, I, I make my own MFT style benches um, using the UKJ, UJK, I've got to get it right, UJK path system. Google it, um, it's brilliant. Um, it's costly, a lot of people complain, oh bloody 300 bucks for you know one off type. No, loan it to your friends. Make a giant thing for your friends and charge them for it. Um, split the cost between friends. You know, I have made, although look, I'm, I'm not, screaming for money. I, I'm, I'm not rich, but I certainly don't necessarily cry poor. Um, so I don't charge friends for making it. However, I've made over a dozen, well, forgetting about what I've made here, which I've got, what, one, two, three, four, five of these type of uses already. I've made over a dozen for friends. Now, when you consider a dozen 16 into 300, that's what, 20 bucks a go. That's not, not expensive. And time. Anyway, UKJ brought out this reamer. It's a nice little hand reamer. Um, slap it in the hole. Twist it around. And you've got your... Oops. Bad hole. No. So, yeah, you've got your hole oh, actually. Hang on. Might need a few more. No, it's a bad, bad spot because that thing. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, here we go. Now, it's got a this knurling. As you can see, I'm actually doing quite a bit of this. To, and there is going to be a bit of tear out because of uh, the I'm going across against the grain or whatever but there you are that's an air flush which is great um, however having said that as you could see um, compared to the previous hole with the um, countersink bit it took me quite a bit of effort now bearing in mind that I've got a dodgy thumb I can only do about well, half a dozen of these before it gets bad. My left arm is buggered, so I really can't use oh, I can use it, but, oh, no. It's, and I've got to put, twist it the wrong way. So that's no good. However, old UKJ, they're, 
determined to suck your money some other way they've come up with this other where is it here we go this other unit which is much the same as that but it's drill mounted it's got a nice long shaft it's tapered so it eases into the hole and it's sort of like a self-guided 90 degrees look at the end of the day I probably would to be a hundred percent set it up in that combination to do the drilling so you do, you're guaranteed a perpendicular thing however um, this will guide itself perpendicular it's got the chamfer bit on there much like that one has however it's also got a reamer on the edges because over time <coughs> wood will swell or could swell to the point where it's going to get all ragged and hairy this chamfering bit will clean that up now with these dogs if the hole shrinks is it shrinking or which is the best way expands when I say expands the hole expands means the hole gets bigger doesn't sound right expanding yeah but anyway if the hole gets bigger because this is sort of like jams around all over it'll self center and uh, jam up however um, if it gets furry you might find that this just doesn't want to go down so this would be ideal to if it doesn't go turn it on go down but then the last bit will do that chamfering for you the only thing I don't like about it um, is that as it's spinning around it puts this little ring around the hole hey it's a workbench it's going to get dirty it's going to get dented but you've just made it you don't want the first scratch happening with a setup tool so you can go through and touch all the other ones I can't do that because I can't go down deep enough because of the bench underneath but as you can see it's a hell of a lot quicker oh, than the chamfering tool it does help to steady it there you, you can virtually do a whole tabletop with this in a matter of minutes well honestly when I used this on this tabletop it took me days days only because I could only do about half a dozen at a time before my thumb got so sore I couldn't do it so there you are the alternative that that, that that's there about that's about 50 bucks I think that's about 75 bucks now I did get it from UK Axminster uh, Carbotech usually sell it but unfortunately they do put a hefty price on it and uh, all right it's imported it's shipping uh, but then again half the time they haven't got it or they it's on order uh, backlisted etc so I forget that again this is great now the Beal wood threader oh look I'll swear by that now if I need to for argument's sake like say I wanted to with these they've got a reach um, the, the reach of these is if you extend that is from there to basically well there anything it, it, you, you need at least that much depth for it to be workable however the maximum depth is such and such now if by for some reason you you're missing out on about two or three mil <coughs> this is where I found that this to be quite good because what you can do is hang on let's which which is the best way yeah if I put that on there not that you can measure it or see it but you see the the depth so it can actually go down that little bit up to that 
bit up to there. But if suddenly now you find the depth you want is about three or four mil further than that, what you can do, come on baby, is put this little unit on, undo the depth stop, which is quite it's actually brilliant. This, this, I've got to admit, I reckon this is brilliant engineering. Now, where's me thing? Here we are. Slap this on. Oh, come on. Okay. No, I'll give it a bit more. Oh, come on. That'll do. At least, you know, this is a demo. Bear in mind, I'm not set, I wasn't set up to do this, but by the depth of that countersink, when you put it through here, oh, You've got that extra 3mm reach underneath and let's face it at the top it's still you can pass over it unless you're concerned about that hollow but for God's sake you're not going to be sealing that because that's going to be coming out um, you might drop a few screws down there or you might lose a chisel or your mallet down that indentation but other than that at least you know where to look for it. So there you have it boys and girls, um, hopefully a couple of little products that might help uh, make your MFT tabletop style a little bit more comfortable. Okay, Uru, catch you later. If you happen to be watching this video, sorry I forgot to mention this, there are these other little Doovies available. Um, I think again another UKJ product. The whole idea of the UKJ system is when you lay out your dogs, you don't necessarily, depending on how you lay uh, lay your table out. Sometimes you find that you cannot get two dogs adjacent within the 96 mil distance um, only because you what's the word for it um, you do need a Veritas bench dog to hold the jig to steady the jig if you've already got a hole cut but if you then want to extend it um, and you need to use the UKJ path system and you actually find that your jig is situated in such a way that there's no 3mm pinholes for you to locate it to secure it and line it up properly that's where these little units come in handy you drop it in and now you can drop your 3 mil pin in there to secure the jig rather than using because if you haven't got the 25 mil hole like say the jig is look I'll go and get the jig that'll explain the situation so much better Here we are. Here's the jig. Now, as you can see, what you can do is you can anchor the jig using, oh come on, it's a tight fit. Come on baby. It's a pain. Now I've got to admit, it's a pain. I hate this because it's such a tight tolerance you're, you're okay. Now you can see there you've actually got um, another spot for another one of these dogs. However, 
if for some reason you wanted to put um, a hole, where, where the hell would you want to put the hole? Let's just say you didn't have the hole and you didn't have, um, well, you didn't have the hole, simple as that. I don't know how to explain it. What you can then do is use that pin locator in there to line that up um, with it. But anyway, having said that, that also has got that little collar on it whereby you need that thing chamfered. All right, I think I've confused myself more than you, so I shall have to go and sleep on it. Uru, keep safe. Damn, I should script my stuff because there's something I can't remember whether I mentioned or not. Another option naturally is using a router come trimmer come whatever you like to call it. What I've got in here is a uh, 90 degree or 45 degree depending on which way you look at it. V bit with a um, bearing follower on it. I have set the depth accordingly and again with this you can do, remember I said to you, you can go quite deep. You can do the same thing with this. You can virtually go as deep as you like and just make sure you don't chew through the base with the big router bit. But it's just a simple case of... Now hang on, I don't think I can do... Yeah, I can do these end ones because that's the bottom is stopping me. But turn it on. It's on a nice low speed. Drop it in. Now that depth is probably a tad deeper than I would get on a chamfer tool, but then that's me setting it. However, that certainly does a very, very nice job of it. Um, in fact, probably I'd say that does a better job than most of the others. However, that latest one that I showed you in the before this, the Rima um, is really worth um, bu worth buying that unit for its Rima function, because uh, most workshops suffer humidity, and the last thing you want is. Uh, the hole to expand or retract, which oh god, here we go again. But the hole to get smaller, and you can't get your dog in. Uh, otherwise, uh, you file, you rebore, you're gonna screw it up, guaranteed. Okay, this time that's it. I'm closing shop. Uru, keep safe.